Hi students, um, welcome to the information session regarding um, Longwood Managed Apartment Registration uh, for this coming year. Um, at the bottom you'll see that we have our email address which is housing at longwood.edu and our phone number 434-395-2080. Um, so if you have any questions after viewing this presentation, uh, you can feel free to reach out to us either through email or through phone. So just wanted to first go over what some of the new housing options are for um, this coming year. Um, there will be no full occupancy required to register for an apartment space during the registration process. What this means is that um, let's say you're a group of three, um, you'd still be able to sign up for a four bedroom apartment without having the fourth roommate. Um, and then that um, space that you don't fill during the registration process would be available for another student to register for that space. Um, we are also um, going to have something called 12 month housing option um, and summer storage. So what that means is if this year, if you're currently living in an apartment space at the Landings or Lancer Park, and you squat and sign up for that same apartment for next year. Um, you'll have the option to select 12 month housing, which means you are planning to stay in the apartment um, through May, June, and July. Um, or you also have the option to do summer storage, um, where you would be able to store your items in the apartment um, over the summer um, if you're not planning on being there over the summer at no additional cost to the student. Um, so this is a great economical option for students who may be planning on staying in town over the summer or just want the convenience of being able to store their items um, there over the summer um, at no additional cost to the student. Um, after the registration process has concluded, we our office will email those students that are eligible for both of those options um, with instructions on how to sign up for that. Um, Lancer Park, um, in the past at Lancer Park with the parking, um, students could always park their car at Lancer Park that lived there, but they weren't able to drive their cars to campus during the daytime hours. Um, and so we have additional commuter space available now um, on campus. So um, students that sign up to live at Lancer Park will be able to um, have a parking pass that allows them to park at Lancer Park but then also uh, park in the commuter spaces on the main campus. Uh, the FAB will still run that shuttle service from Lancer Park to campus and from campus to Lancer Park, um, but the ability to drive to campus is a, just an added convenience um, to students that are living at Lancer Park. Um, in regards to the uh, meal plan options, we've um, introduced some new exciting meal plans for students that are living at Lancer Park or the landings. Um, so students, um, there's a new meal plan called the Block 50. Um, which comes with a, a good amount of bonus dollars as well on the plan. Um, we still have the Block 80 meal plan, which is now um, we've increased the amount of bonus dollars that come with those plans. Um, so feel free to check out all those new plans on our website and the new costs. Uh, the Block 50 will save students money um, compared to the Block 80 meal plan. So it is also a cost savings to students if they uh, select that meal plan. Um, in regards to the apartment registration process, it will be conducted from February 8th to February 17th. Um, any student that is planning to register with roommates um, will need to create a roommate group form prior to their registration date um, and make sure each student within the group has accepted membership in that group. That's how you'll be able to all sign up as one group on your registration date. Um, and I'll go over that form a little bit later um, in the presentation to explain how that works. Um, as I mentioned before, students can register for an apartment without full occupancy, but are encouraged to fill all apartment spaces, um, if at all possible. Um, housing registration will be conducted each day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Student Housing Gateway. Um, and so one thing you'll just want to make sure is that you enable pop-ups in your web browser. Um, if you've logged into the Housing Gateway previously, then you've already done that in your web browser. But if for some reason you hadn't, um, what will happen is there'll be a little message in the upper right hand corner of your screen that'll say a pop-up was blocked. All you need to do is click on that and select enable pop-ups and then you'll be fine. Um, each group will select one member of the group which we call the designated roommate to register the group for an assignment. Uh, the designated roommate um, their responsibility would just be to make sure that all members of the group have accepted the invitation to the group so that way everybody can get pulled in um, as roommates during the registration process on that um, date that you will be registering. 
So first, just want to go over the timeline for registration. So the squatting registration process, which is the process for people that want to sign up to return to the same apartment unit. Um, during this process, you just need one person who currently lives in the unit right now that is planning to return to the unit to register. So for example, I may live in the landings this year, but three of my roommates might be graduating. Um, as long as I'm currently living in the unit and planning to return to that unit, I can log in on either the 8th, 9th, or 10th um, and sign up my whole group and pull in my roommates who may not be living in, in this space this semester but they can, they can be pulled in as roommates during squatting because I currently live in the apartment and I'm planning on returning to the apartment unit. Um, students can squat over three days, so you can pick whichever day is most convenient for you, um, and the registration will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and as I mentioned, this is for your students that are gonna return to the same studio apartment, two bedroom or four bedroom apartment. Um, students are eligible to register without the full occupancy requirement. Um, but they are encouraged to fill as many spaces as they can within the apartment. Um, and um, as I mentioned before, those students that squat and return to the same bedroom are eligible to participate in the summer storage or the 12 month housing uh, program that we are offering. The studio lottery will also take place um, from February 8th to February 10th. Um, the studio lottery is for only um, rising juniors and seniors, so students with at least 56 or more completed credits at the end of the spring 2021 semester. Um, so over those three days from the 8th to the 10th, students can log in the student housing gateway and they can submit the lottery application. This process is done by lottery because we have a small number of studio apartments available to students. Um, so we reserve it for only juniors and seniors. Sophomores can live in all of our two bedroom and four bedroom apartments, but only juniors and seniors in the studios. What will happen is um, after the lottery is conducted, um, all students that uh, participate in the lottery will be notified regarding the lottery results by 12 noon on Thursday, February 11th. Um, we do that um, to make sure that students know whether they're going to be able to sign up for a studio before we get into the next week of registration. So if for some reason you didn't win the studio lottery, you would have the opportunity to then register for a two or a four bedroom apartment um, the following week during the process. On Monday, February 15th um, is when we will have senior apartment registration. Um, this date is for anybody um, who has 89 or more completed credits at the end of the spring semester. So if one person in your roommate group has at least 89 credits at the end of the spring semester, this will be the day that your entire group will register. The student that will log into the housing gateway will be the student that has at least 89 completed credits and they will be able to sign themselves up and their roommates. So for example, I could be a rising senior next year with at least 89 or completed credits. And I may have three friends of mine that um, are rising juniors and they have less than 89 completed credits. But I can sign all of us up on that day as long as I'm the person logging into the computer system. So we do encourage students to talk to their roommates about how many completed credits they have to determine who would be the best person in your group to serve as that designated roommate. Students can check their completed credit total at any time. In the Student Housing Gateway, there is a button there that says Check Completed Credits. Um, so you can click on that and the system will tell you how many completed credits you have. Um, so that's a great resource to use. As I mentioned before, you can register for the space without full occupancy, um, but we are encouraging students to fill as many spaces in the apartment as possible. Then on Tuesday, February 16th from 10 to 4, um, we will have our junior apartment registration. Um, the designated roommate uh, must have earned at least 56 completed credits at the end of the spring semester um, to sign themselves up and their roommates. Um, so the same thing like with senior day, as long as the person logging in has at least 56 completed credits, they can pull in students as roommates who have less than 56 credits. Um, so everybody can sign up on that day. And as I mentioned before, um, students are eligible to register without full occupancy, but are encouraged to fill the apartment um, to full occupancy, if at all possible. And then next, we'll have our sophomore apartment registration. This will be on February 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. through the Student Housing Gateway. 
Um, this day is for anybody who has less than 56 credits. So 55 or less completed credits at the end of the spring semester, everybody in your group has less than 56. This will be your day to register. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, students are eligible to register without full occupancy, but we do encourage students to fill as many spaces in the apartment as possible. Some helpful uh, reminders and tips. Um, the, all of our different apartment configurations are at a different price point. So we do encourage that students um, take a look at the housing and meal plan rates on the Residential and Computer Life website um, and discuss those rates with whoever it is that helps you um, pay for your housing here at Longwood. Um, so that way you're signing up for something that you know that you can afford. Um, we do always encourage students to take a look at our housing terms and conditions, which is published on our website. Um, students can access the Student Housing Gateway directly at the link provided there. Um, that link's been emailed to students several times. Um, there's also a link underneath the Lancer dashboard on the main um, university website. And there's also a link to the Student Housing Gateway on the, law, on the Residential and Commuter Life website as well. We always suggest to students that you guys talk about what your backup plans are. If for some reason, let's say your first choice is you want to get into a townhouse at Lancer Park, and when you go to log in, there aren't any more available, then where does your group want to sign up next? Um, it just makes things easier on your designated roommate that they know exactly what your group wants to do. Um, make sure that you enable those pop-ups in your web browser. Our office will post the total number of apartment units that remain after each registration date um, the evening before the next day. Um, so what this means is when we finish the squatting registration, we will post an update right on the main page of our website underneath our announcements to let students know going into the senior day how many townhouses remain, how many two-bedroom apartments are left, how many four-bedroom apartments are left in each community. It just gives students a good idea of how many are left before the registration day so they can have an idea of what the likelihood is that they're going to get their first choice um, when they go to register. We will do the same thing after senior registration and we'll do the same thing after junior registration so that each day of the process the students are aware of that. That, that announcement is typically posted on our website between 5 and 6 p.m. Um, so if you check around 6 p.m., it'll definitely be up. The other recommendation is just to make sure your roommates have all accepted membership in your uh, roommate group prior to your registration date. So next what I'm going to do is go over what the registration process will look like in the Student Housing Gateway so you're familiar with the process before your registration day. It is very simple process. Um, it won't take you long to complete, but I want to make sure that um, students have had an opportunity to take a look at this and be able to ask any questions that they might have. So this screen should look very familiar to most students. This is where you log into the Student Housing Gateway with your LancerNet ID and password. Once logged in, you go to a welcome screen here where it has your name and your RMS ID number and all the different options of things that you can do. <coughs> so one of the things that's available right now in the Student Housing Gateway, the roommate group form is available now because that's something that you want to complete before your registration date. There, the button for checking your total credits is available to students now. And when we get to the apartment registration process beginning, two additional buttons will, will be there for students. The one is, the first button is if you have a, a roommate group that can fill an apartment to full occupancy. So for example, let's say there's two of you and you want to sign up for a two bedroom apartment. You can fill that apartment to full occupancy. Let's say you're a group of four and you want to sign up for a four bedroom apartment. You can fill that apartment to full occupancy. You would then click on the first apartment registration button there, which is for full occupancy apartment registration. If you are a group that's looking to only partially occupy an apartment, so for example, let's say you're a group of two students, but you want to live in a four bedroom apartment, then you're going to click on the partial occupancy apartment registration button. Let's say you're a group of three and you want to sign up for a four bedroom apartment, then you would do the partial occupancy. And let's say you're a student, you don't have any roommates, it's just you. Um, then you would sign up on the partial occupancy uh, form during the registration process. So those buttons will be there once we get to the day when apartment registration is beginning. So next I just want to explain the roommate group form. As I mentioned earlier, this is something that you want to do prior to your registration day if you're planning on signing up with a specific roommate or roommates. 
So you would click on the roommate group form in the, in the Housing Gateway. Once you get on this form, there's instructions there on the screen. But what you would need to do is click on the green Create Group button to uh, begin creating your group. Once you do that, you will have the option to invite members to your group. How you invite members to your group is you search for them by their RMSID number. As I mentioned earlier, when you log into Student Housing Gateway, right on the welcome screen, it lists your name, and below that, it lists your RMSID number. So you'll want to give that RMSID number to whoever the person is that's initiating your roommate group. They will then use that number to search for you and add you to the group. So you'll go ahead and type in that RMSID number, click the search button, the student's name will appear, and then you'll click the green select button to add them to your group, and then their name will show up above. So as you can see on this screen, um, there, are, there are two additional people who've already been invited to the roommate group. One individual is listed as a member, the other one is listed as invited, and there's somebody listed as the leader. By default, the person who has the status of leader is the person who initiates the roommate group. This person does not have to be the same person that is going to sign your group up on your day to register. It's simply um, just a way for the system to know who created the roommate group. If someone is listed as a member, that means they've accepted the membership in the group. So after you formed the roommate group, they got an email, they logged into this form, they accepted the membership in the group. If someone is listed as invited, that means they haven't accepted membership in the group yet, but you've invited them to the group. So that person would need to accept the membership in the group prior to your registration day. So what happens when you add your roommate groups? Once you've added all of the students to your roommate group, at the bottom of the screen, you'll click on the Finish button to save that information. Once it's saved, the system will send out emails to all the students that have been invited with instructions for them to go into the roommate group form and to either accept or reject membership in the group. So when they log into the form, they're going to see their name and they're going to see two buttons next to their name. One is to accept membership, one is to reject membership. Once that student has accepted or rejected membership and clicked finish at the bottom of their, their form, Emails will go out to everybody who's a part of the group, letting them know if that student has accepted or rejected membership in the group. So you will be constantly getting emails updating you on the status of your group. So you should be well aware um, if everyone has accepted membership in the group. If you're getting close to your registration date and you want to double check to make sure everyone's accepted, you can log into the Housing Gateway, click on the roommate group form, and you'll be able to see the status of everybody who's a part of your group. And once you submit the roommate group form, it will give you a confirmation message that it has been submitted. Next, I want to show you what the apartment registration process will look like when you get to the day to register. So whoever's your designated roommate who's logging in to sign up your group, um, want to make sure that they know how this process will look um, and what they will need to do. There's really only a couple things that you need to do. One is when you... Um, click on the apartment registration button and you're brought to this first page. It's just telling you that you're going to be registering for fall and spring semester. At the bottom of the screen, anybody who has accepted membership in your roommate group will be listed underneath your roommates. So if, if someone is missing that you think should be listed there, the typical reason is because they have not accepted membership in the group. So you'll want to call them and ask them to go ahead and do that so that you can continue with the registration process. So if all your roommates are listed at the bottom of the screen there, um, all you'll do is then click on Next Step. Um, so the system is automatically going to list the roommates that have accepted membership in your group underneath your selected roommates. So then you don't need to do anything with that on your registration day. You're taking care of that ahead of time with the roommate group form. So what you're going to do is then click Next Step at the bottom of the screen. And it's now going to take you to the, the spot where you get to pick your apartment. So on the left hand side of the screen you're going to see Lancer Park listed and you're going to see Longwood Landings listed. So if you know that you want to live in Longwood Landings you're going to click on Longwood Landings and on the right hand side of the screen uh, in the white part of the box 
you're going to see all the available apartments listed for the landings. And so what you'll do at that point is you can look at the list and you can determine what space you'd like to sign up for. Once you know the apartment you want to sign up for, there's a yellow lock icon to the far right uh, in that box. You're just going to click on that lock icon. What will happen when you click on the lock icon is it will, it will remove that apartment from the list of available apartments and it will remain locked until you complete the registration process. Kind of like Ticketmaster when you're ordering tickets. So once you select um, the, the apartment that you would like to lock, um, to sign up for, you will then click on next step and it's going to take you here. Um, you're going to use the drop downs underneath the bed spaces to put each of your roommates in the bedroom you want them to live in in the apartment. Um, in the apartments, each student has a designated bedroom and the A and B bedrooms will share a bathroom and the C and D bedrooms will share a bathroom. So what you're going to do is you're going to use those drop downs to select um, which space you want students to um, to be assigned to. If you get to the screen and you realize, oops, I selected the wrong apartment, you don't have to start all over. You can just click on that release lock button underneath the last bed space and it'll take you back to the previous screen where you can select a different apartment. <clears throat> but if you know you've selected the correct apartment, you will now use those drop downs to place each of your roommates in a specific bedroom. And that's what it'll look like once you've put each of them in a bedroom. And then there's only one last thing that you need to do, which is to click the next step button at the bottom of the screen. When you do that, your registration is complete. Each of your roommates will receive an email that they have been registered for the housing assignment. In that email, it will also provide you and your roommates instructions on how to register for your meal plan. Um, and so um, you'll just follow the instructions there, click on the, the appropriate link that will be in the email, and then each student will sign up for their meal plans for next year. Um, and so that is the process. Um, it's really a process that should only take you a few minutes to complete that day once you're logged into the Housing Gateway. If you have any additional questions about this process, please feel free to email us at housing at longwood.edu or call us at 434-395 2080. Thank you very much and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you.